Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. In this video, I want to talk about music theory. I want to talk about how you think about it, how you learn it and how you use it. Because I find that music theory is really something that you need to work on and learn from the ground up if you really want to have any use for it. And you also have to make sure that you're actually applying it to music when you're trying to learn it because it has a practical side as well as just being music theory. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, about improvising over chord changes, checking out some interesting arpeggios or scales, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. To explain what I mean by building your music theory from the ground up, let's say that you know what a backdoor dominant is, but you don't know your F major scale well enough to realize that E flat is the flat seven in F, and that means that you're probably not going to recognize that E flat seven to F major seven is a backdoor dominant progression. That's why it's important that you learn the really basic things that you're going to use to analyze a progression like that. Uh, so you really do need to know all your major scales and all the notes that are in there. Uh, you need to know the chords that are, are common in the keys and you need to know what notes are in the chords. All the common stuff that you need to know have a firm grasp of the theory and the the basic knowledge of what is in there and use that when you're trying to apply it to all the other things so that a term like a backdoor dominant is just is not just some sort of empty term that you can't actually recognize or use for anything. The next thing that maybe needs a little bit of explanation is this idea of putting the theory into practice because of course it's music theory it's not practice but in fact what music theory is is a way of describing what you hear so it's giving you the tools to understand the music that you're hearing and the music that you're playing. And this is really important to realize because that also means that you want to be able to apply it and you want to use it on the music that you're actually trying to play or that you're listening to. The easiest way to apply music theory and to really get into your system is probably to analyze the songs that you play uh, and the music you're trying to check out. So most of that is probably not going to be uh, songs that you've written yourself because you're hopefully if you're studying also studying the music of other people I think an important part of learning an instrument learning a style of music is also studying what's going on around you So don't try to invent everything yourself Really to try and recognize what everybody else is doing so that you understand what's going on And certainly this is true for jazz, but I think it's actually true for most genres of music If you want to learn a specific type of theory or a specific topic Then you also need to realize that you have to know music where it's used. It's not going to make a lot of sense if you're trying to learn how what an augmented sixth chord is uh, and uh, the music that you play is, is going to be like Hey Joe and Enter Sandman and Autumn Leaves because they don't have those types of uh, chords in there. So you need to make a conscious effort to find songs that have the topics um, that in there that you're trying to learn in terms of music theory because that's the way that you can relate it to music that you've actually played so you've really heard it uh, and that you have an idea about what is going on on a much deeper level. What I'm talking about is that there are several layers to knowing something. So if we take, um, let's take the blues as an example for this. If you know the pentatonic scale, then that doesn't actually mean that you know how to play the blues. It's not enough to just know, okay, they're using the pentatonic scale, so if I know that, then I can play the blues. And actually the next level would be, well, of course you can have this sort of theoretical knowledge of the scale that they're mostly using, but you can also have an example that you know how to play. So if you can play a BB King solo, well, if you can play a BB King solo, then that doesn't mean that you can play the blues. That means you can play one BB King solo. You can play the blues when you can take the pentatonic scale and all the phrasing that you've learned from the BB King solo, and you can apply that to your own music and to your own playing. Then it might be the blues, but not just by knowing that it's a pentatonic scale and certainly also not by just being able to mimic one BB King solo. If I take this somewhat obvious example with the blues and then turn that into an example of music theory, so one thing that I come across quite often is that people will know when something is a secondary dominant. So the basic level here is that you realize what key the piece of music that you're playing is in, and uh, then you realize that one dominant chord, that the dominant chord that you come across is not the dominant of the key, and that means that it has to be a secondary dominant. Now that may not always be true because I've already mentioned the backdoor dominant and augmented six chords, and they tend to, to appear also, and they are not really dominants in that way. Uh, so it, that, can, that can actually already not be entirely true. But there's also this level of understanding what a secondary dominant is, where you look at, well, what key are we in? Where is it resolving to? Uh, and um, let that context 
influence how you choose to play on it. So you have to actually be able to take the secondary dominant and understand what scale goes over it, what kind of extensions does it have, and what does it sound like. And that level is going on top of just knowing that it's a secondary dominant. You need to know it a little bit more than just having that empty piece of information. And then the next layer of that is being able to apply that information and actually know how to play it, just having that knowledge. Probably the main message that I'm trying to get across with this video is that it's important that you learn a lot of real music. So if you want to be good at music theory and if you want to have any sort of benefit from knowing all these things so it doesn't just become sort of empty pieces of isolated knowledge, is that you can recognize it and realize that you actually play it a lot in all the music that you play. But for that to happen, you really do need to know a lot of songs. You really do need to check out a lot of music where all this theory is happening and try to understand it. So it's always worthwhile to understand and at least try to understand the music that you're playing. You don't have to be able to analyze everything, but it's good to just try and see if you can figure out what's going on. It's going to make it a lot easier if you know a lot of music with a lot of examples of the theory that you want to apply. So for that reason, if you're trying to learn to play jazz, it makes a lot of sense to have a fairly large repertoire of standards because that's going to give you sort of a wide foundation of all the different ways that you can come across a four minor chord or an augmented six chord or um, the dominant of the dominant. And knowing not only the pieces, but maybe also having check in, checked out some solos, transcribed some things, you also know the, the habits of people who are playing and what you expect uh, to hear in this style, because that does vary from style to style. But I think it's always worthwhile to just realize that it's useful to learn a lot of music and also that actually if you're learning music and you're trying to analyze it it also gets kind of interesting it makes sense to try and analyze enter sandman or to try and analyze get lucky from daft punk because it's interesting to see how they work and and um, what key is it it's in and if it's different from the way that you're used to all of me or stella by starlight make sure to learn music play music and don't try to just sit down and learn theory from a book or uh, analyzing or watching my videos and then making it sort of empty, isolated pieces of information because it's probably not going to be useful for you. You're not going to be able to apply it in your soloing or in your playing or in the music that you write or the standards that you reharmonize. For me, the big question with this video and what I'm really curious to hear is uh, how do you guys work with theory? How do you learn it? How do you use it? I realized that for me it's really important that I have all these uh, songs in my repertoire and that I sort of tend to take any kind of theory and then realize that it's in several styles. Uh, so um, the Radiohead song, uh, that's, that's um, what's called Creep, that's in the news right now with the lawsuit. So if it's in G, no that is in G actually, so G, um, and then we have this, which is kind of like an auxiliary dominant resolving to the flat six in the minor key, which in this case in a major key is going to be the fourth degree, and then we get four minor. So this is a complicated, in that respect, it's a complicated progression. I like to just realize that it's that progression and that it's similar to uh, Someday My Prince Will Come or a lot of other uh, progressions that we know. And in that way, I use this knowledge all the time and I'm curious if you guys also try to do this, or if you work on theory in a completely different way, then I want to know that as well, because I think it's, it's an interesting topic, and it may also have a lot of influence on uh, how, I, how I make videos in the future, uh, and also maybe what videos you're looking for. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, and this is the first time you see one of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. The videos that I publish here every week are on finding some solid methods and good strategies to explore all the great things about jazz guitar and jazz improvisation. If you like this video and you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. I'm very grateful for the support that I'm getting from my patrons, and it's because of that that I can keep making videos every week. If you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching, and until next week.